Home, don't forget to wash your hands and gargle. Okay, mom. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rose from California. I've been living in Japan since 2013. Currently, I live in Aomori Prefecture with my Japanese husband. Last weekend, we took a trip to Ninohe, Iwate Prefecture to participate as monitors in the city's food diversity project. We visited four local restaurants that have added vegan food to the menu, and the home of the world's first vegan certified sake. As vegans ourselves, we are always excited to see new vegan options becoming available. In this video, we will show you what we did and where we stayed while we were in Ninohe. Ninohe is a short two-hour drive from Hirosaki, where we live. It takes about two and a half hours from Tokyo to Ninohe by Shinkansen. Our first stop was Nambu Bijin, the sake brewery to make the world's first vegan certified sake. We were impressed with the variety of sake that had been certified. Not only the regular sake, but also things like sparkling sake and umeshu had the vegan label. We don't normally drink alcohol, but we bought three bottles to take home with us. Next on our agenda was Rontan Shuka, a Chinese food restaurant which has recently added vegan food to the menu. There were four choices, and while I wanted to try all of them, I wasn't sure how big the portions were. So we decided to try the tan tan men and mabo dofu first. Mm. Mm. Our curiosity got the best of us, and we decided to order the fried rice too. By the end of lunch, we were totally stuffed, but it was worth it. After lunch, we stopped by a local cafe to get some coffee. They might have vegan sweets here. What? We just found it by coincidence. We were surprised and excited to find these vegan sweets. For dinner, we made a reservation to have vegan sushi. We both got the vegan sushi set, which came with miso soup and dessert. ありがとうございます。すごい可愛い。うん。<笑> Because we were only staying one night, we had to double book some of our meals. So despite being rather full from our meal, we moved on to the next restaurant. Luckily, at Teppanyaki Rai, we can order food little by little, giving our stomachs time to digest. They offer several vegan options, which are clearly marked on the menu. We chose to sit at the counter so that we could see the chef cook our food up close. The chef was very friendly, and we enjoyed talking with him during our meal. He said that he enjoys cooking vegan food as it challenges him to get creative. Good 
食感がいいねもう美味しそう俺も食べたいうまっ本当にピザみたいこれがタッコニンニクですね青森県産 He also told us that he uses separate grills for vegan and non vegan customers to reduce the risk of contamination. If you're looking for a unique experience, this is the place. Not only is it much less expensive than the teppanyaki you would find in Tokyo, but it's also much more personal. Using a mix of traditional methods, the chef's inspiration, and local ingredients, they create unique and delicious food that you won't find anywhere else. We stayed at Ryokufu So, a traditional Japanese inn or ryokan in the Kintaichi Onsen village. We chose the sudomari plan, with no meals included, since we plan to eat all of our meals out. The men's and women's baths were separate. Lucky for me, I had the women's bath all to myself. The next morning, we had the sweets we got from Olioli for breakfast. Both the brownie and the tart were delicious. After breakfast, we checked out the lobby. Then, we stepped outside to see the sunrise and get some fresh air. Our final destination was a soba restaurant called Shiki no Sato. Before eating lunch, we decided to check out the area. All of the buildings in this little village are owned by the same local company. The founder of the company, a woman named Shiki, started the business making senbei in 1948. Now, there's a senbei shop and factory, a soba restaurant, a museum, and a garden for visitors to enjoy. Finally, it was time for lunch. The vegan menu includes a choice of hot or cold soba noodles with an optional side of tempura. Hot soba tea is available for free. I got the cold soba noodles with vegetable and senbei tempura. And that's the end of our vegan trip to Ninohe. If you're interested in visiting any of these shops, I'll put the link to each one in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more content about my life in Japan. Thanks for watching, and see you again next time!